Um, all right, good. So uh, Stuart, um, let me uh, just spotlight you for a second and uh, bring you up, up close and personal here. Um, Stuart, welcome. Thank you for doing this. I took a class from Stuart way, uh, I don't know, four or five years ago maybe, um, and realized uh, that I had learned an awful lot and still use the um, stick that he gives out as part of the ritual of taking his class. And uh, each new student gets the the stick. <laughs> um, yeah. but, uh, uh, anyway, Stuart, welcome and thank you very much for doing this with us tonight. Of course, my pleasure. And Stuart, I know that you were one of the first ones. You were out there with uh, Scott Talman Powers. Uh, you're, you're, uh, you were one that was going out very early on and in the Plenar Painter Chicago. You've been part of us for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just before we get to that, I, I do want to mention that I, that I myself have a workshop coming up August 22nd and 23rd. It's a two-day plein air thing through the pallet and chisel. <clears throat> Last I knew there was only one spot left, so um, I don't know if that's still open, but you might, if you're interested, you might contact the office or email Bill and, and sign up. I think it's 225 for two days, and uh, I'm in the process of Picking what, what spots we're going to go to, I think I have a pretty good idea of one. Um, probably do one in the city and one in the suburbs. And I'm going to check out the suburbs one um, this coming Saturday. So, Linda, Linda Brown just noted that it was full. Oh, uh, okay. So you must have a wait list. Okay. Well, okay. Well, then. But yes, I was one of the beginning in 2003. Um, uh, Scott Powers, uh, Scott Tolman Powers, and um, a couple other people like Christina Bodie and uh, Wesley Drake, and um, a couple other people. We started going out on Saturday morning, and soon, you know, quickly got more people involved. You know, Errol and uh, Errol Jacobson and um, uh, Pablo De Leon, and he's moved away and. But he yeah, shows we, up once in a while with us. Yeah, and he, he lives in Tucson. He comes back every once in a while. But yeah, it was a very hardcore group of <clears throat> people that went out on Saturday mornings. And Scott, of course, was the um, our mentor for many years. And then he he's moved. I think he's now in either Montana or Alaska or someplace like that. Yeah, Kalispell. Okay, Montana. Kalispell. Montana, yeah. Um, so I learned a tremendous amount from Scott and from going out on Saturday mornings and just what we would do uh, was line up the paintings afterwards and go through them and talk them through with with uh, Scott and everybody else. And by seeing what was, you know, you learn kind of what was done well, what works, and you also learn what doesn't work. And so I think it's helpful to learn in a group setting like this. And uh, same with the same with painting from the figure uh, at the palette. You know, you learn not only what to do, but also what not to do. And that's a very important way of. Uh, so, well, speaking of that, Stuart, um, talk about what you're going to look at um, during your critique tonight. Okay, so I what I what I focus on tonight is to the extent I can and not talking about other things is um, values, which are very, look, I think the most important things are going to be composition, values, drawing, color, and then uh, the edge treatment is kind of, uh, <clears throat> uh, is in there as well. But I want to talk about values and composition you know, I think those are the two things where uh, I myself find the most challenge, and uh, particularly composition. But values are are it's going to be what's going to make the painting solid and read strongly, um, and will uh, pay it will pay uh, repay attention very much. Drawing, you know, I think is important too, but it's, it's not so much, uh, 
doesn't become such a challenge uh, when you're painting out of doors because the nobody knows what the tree looks like you know trees are kind of random um, but so these are the two things I want to talk about values and composition for the most part all right good well I think we could get started and so if you would share your screen okay we'll start with Clayton see if I can find here we are can everybody see that yep okay um yeah so clayton this is a really charming little watercolor and i like the composition you know the value structure is great the drawing excellent you know when i look at this the first time i saw it and when i've gone back to it again um really only one thing bugs me Okay, um, and that's a, it's a matter of this, um, before I get to that, I should say, I really love this treatment of the bricks here. Uh, and in general, the kind of loose treatment as you get from watercolor, uh, leaving little white spaces in the trees like this or on the on the paper, you know, I think it adds to the charm of the of the of the work. I also love the things like this where you've drawn the uh, the top of this pillar in just negatively by using the pigment around it to to get the the shape of that thing. I, I, I really like that a lot. Um, the one thing that bugs me is how this line doesn't seem to read with the perspective that we're looking at this wall in. In other words, this, for example, this line of the tower here You know, it reads, it's going away from us, going down. I'm wondering if if your eye level is actually on a level with with this, or would it make more sense that your eye level how do I oh that your eye level is um above the base of this fence and therefore it would rise to meet the horizon rather than just being level as if it were the horizon itself. And it's really the only thing that kind of jumps out at me on this. And, and maybe the thing to do is just raise this, um, you could raise this a little bit. So it doesn't seem to be dropping off the slope here. Um, yeah, that's, other than that, I don't, I really don't, well, maybe, you know, one other thing is this, um, now I can't see it because, uh, hang on, oh, it might be nice to take the trees the top of the trees. Can you see the cursor? Yep. I don't know what happened to Clayton now. That's okay. Oh, here he is. The top of the trees might just run, might be nice to kind of run off the paper instead of, you know, like you did here, maybe just run this off rather than have that little thing meet there. But this is all very, very charming. I mean, there's no question about it. Like, like this sort of thing. Gotta love that. And this sort of thing, gotta love that too. This is pretty, you know, hard and square, but uh, that's what you get with a quick watercolor, so. It's a great start, Stuart. Okay. This is the next one, right? Yes, Jean okay. Yang. Yeah, jeans, okay. 
So the value, here's where we get to the value situation. Uh, because the value of this background is pretty dark. If we want to, if we want to be silhouetting this flower shape and this flower shape as well. You, in other words, you might be able to go a little bit lighter on the value of this background and make these flowers stand out stronger. They've got great edges, nice drawing, good color, everything about it is nice, but they're a little bit, uh, they're a little bit weak because they're against a relatively darker background. Now the compositional element that I would say, see here is um, two, it's, it's really one, it's the same problem on both sides, but we've got this structure over here and we've got a similar structure over here. So there's like two columns that frame the, the flowers. And you might consider just um, getting rid of them. In other words, if you were to get rid of, the, get rid of this and uh, maybe cut this down, make a more interesting shape out of that tree. I, I think there's a tree in the background, right? You could have a more interesting shape of that tree um, and <clears throat> get, uh, you know, something, something that's not just a column of value on the side, especially when it parallels the column of value on the other side. Does that make sense? Good. I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing Jean, but. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure that she's here. Okay. But yeah, for, for everybody else. Uh, also, I mean, it, let's say we just made a square out of this. And we're able to get rid of this stuff here and this stuff here. It would be a stronger uh, painting, I think. So uh, I think these, I can see probably what happened is that there's a tree over here and there's a tree in the background and see, so you know, you try to be faithful to what's there, but uh, especially with no, uh, right, right now there's kind of no explanation of what this structure is on this side. Could be a wall, could be a tree trunk, not sure. Right now it kind of functions as a shape that frames the, the flowers, but we have the same issue on this side as well. And uh, I would just suggest getting rid of the one on the left and making a more interesting shape out of the one on the right. And that with, with making the background slightly lighter would strengthen the flowers and improve the composition. I think this this background shape here, you know, this this one that goes across the flowers, is fine. That reads as a, um, you know, a distant tree line or maybe a row of houses or something like that. That's fine. That, that that's not bothersome. Um, but yeah, Jean, not not here. That's right. Okay, we'll go to the next one then. Is that all right? Good. Okay. Uh, Elena. Yeah, Elena. <clears throat> you know, I think that oh, overall the value, you know, we're having the same issue with values. We have a bright, a brighter, warm brick background with a relatively light uh, mass of flowers. So, and, and the flowers have these dark parts in them. Right now, I'm, I'm not sure which one is meant to be lighter or darker, the flowers or the, or the wall. I think that's um, compounded by the treatment of the, <coughs> the treatment of the paint. In other words, uh, 
this kind of impasto treatment of the flowers is nice. It's in front, it works. Uh, you see them, uh, they grab attention from the impasto. But then we have impasto treatment in the background as well, uh, on that side as well as on that side. And it might be a little, um, might be stronger to, to uh, have one, to vary the treatment of the, of the paint itself, okay? Uh, values again on the, on the leaves of these orchids. Uh, again, there's a little bit of, I can see a little indecision about whether this, whether this is lighter or darker than say this, which is next to it. And I think squinting uh, would make, would help decide what's brighter or darker. And uh, the other trick I use is um, to hold up my phone. The, can you see this? Can you guys see me or do you just see the shared screen? I see this, yeah. We see you, Stuart. Okay. So if you, if you hold up your, the black screen of your phone and use it as a mirror, it will help. Um, the black mirror um, compresses the values of what you're looking at and will simplify the values such that you can decide which, which one is stronger, or which one's darker, which one's lighter, and go with that. Um, there's also this this kind of framing thing here. Uh, it might be better just to run this off the page here. Uh, Cause this kind of, this kind of mass gathering at the corner of the canvas can be a little kind of confusing. It kind of draws the eye there and then you're wondering, well, why am I, you know, why am I looking at that? You know what I mean? This sort of thing is nice. I like that, that, and I like the way this painting is kind of obscured by this flower that works. Um, yeah, it's, it's nice. Value, the value difference between here, the background and the flower, and between the leaves and the, what's behind it uh, will strengthen the painting. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so nothing's too bright, nothing's too dark in this painting. Uh, it's sort of all in the middle range of values, with the exception of these uh, dark bits of the flower and, and you know this stem of the of the orchid. So uh, yeah, I think you've got room to maneuver in the value structure between d black and, and complete white, complete black and complete white, where you could differentiate more between these and between here. This, is, this looks like a pastel. And when I first looked at this, I, I was like, oh, this is really nice, you know, very nice, very, kind of softly done, good values. The one thing that bugged me was this railing. <laughs> I don't even know why, but it was, uh, it's either too light or too cool uh, because these ones are warm and bright and these ones are darker, right? And this one kind of jumped out at me as not fitting and I might even just get rid of it you know because um, I think you've got plenty of information back here to explain this structure as like a staircase down and across that totally works it's dim enough and uh, soft enough to recede into the background and this one comes forward so I think that, I think that works well it's really the only thing that bugged me about this one Okay. It is a pastel. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's nice. Thank you. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay, there's that. Okay. Yeah, I like this too. It's a very familiar scene, instantly recognizable, the, the garden at the side of the Art Institute. Um, you know, when I, when I looked at this, I see this tree line kind of goes, uh, it's a, again, like a framing border issue. You might be able to take it off the page here or somewhere. Just so that it's not quite a horizontal uh, thing there um, that, that parallels the, the edge of the canvas, right? And I think one of, I have two other comments to make. One is um, this, I think this is a shadow shape here cast by the building onto the sidewalk. And uh, <clears throat> for some reason it looks, like a pool of water. It looks a little too cool and, and, and maybe a little too light as well, given this. In other words, I think there, we could have a little bit more strength in the shadow, maybe by making it darker in value and slightly warmer. And I think this, uh, this differential between the light and the dark would stand out stronger. I like how the this is kind of a you know a, um, almost reflected light down here. It's not a not sunlight. It's not reading as sunlight in here, but this is meant to be sunlight, and should be I think stronger in comparison to this cast shadow of the building. Is that uh, is that sensible? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, one other thing. The only other thing I see here is. Uh, little, little, um, what you would call, um, it's like a, da uh, what would you call it? It's a little, little, little dabbing of pigment. You might want to treat this structure of the light side of the flowers as more of one shape, one solid shape into which you cut the darks or into which you add on the lights rather than uh, making it an accumulation of kind of dabbing strokes of paint. I think that would make it more solid and more, uh, uh, more, more, just more solid, more legible. One or two of these impasto strokes would do enough uh, on the pr proper value structure to make that really stand out nicely. Um, you know, these ones kind of read as solid and, and, and receding. This one is a little too strong in the, in the value, in the, the paint application. So I make it a solid shape and then into that shape carve the, the darks or the lights. I, I did that because I thought there might, there has to be a focal point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I see why, and it's a good it's a good spot for a focal point because it's oh crap, sorry. Good spot for a focal point where it's um where it's look where it is located. Uh, you know, it's located in a good spot for it. It's a good subject for it. And, um, yeah, so it's just that matter of the paint. Okay, okay let's go to the next Thank one. Thank you. Thanks. This one's, this one's really nice too. It's a watercolor, it looks like. Uh, and here's the reference image. Is that right? Or yes. is that the, or is that the, That's scene, the, on, the scene on location? I'm not sure, but uh, if we look at this uh, again with an eye towards the values, oh. so this is 
this is pretty bright white, you know, um, against a relatively dark background. And here we've we've losing that sense of bright white. And why is that? And uh, I think it's probably because the 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 values of things like this leaf gets a little too light. This leaf is a little too light. We're losing the you know the the darks down here. Um, it's not a we really can't go any brighter than this on a on a watercolor. Uh, so it's got to to make this bright white lighter you know, brighter white. The the background and everything around it has to go a little bit darker. And I know in watercolor it's hard to get things to go super dark. So uh, I know there's that problem, but. Um, so that's really all I would say on that, that, that you know, it's drawn well, it's a nice, interesting composition. Um, the, yeah, I think if we look at this, we can see that the, the um, you know, there's darks down here, up in here. This may be a little bit darker than we, on the drawing. Um, here we've got an interesting value. This is bright, less bright, darker even, right? So gotta, we've gotta keep these value structures in mind uh, to get that thing to read as uh, a bright white, you know, brighter, um, and I think, we could, I think you could do that without getting the competition between this light and this light, all right? This is Shannon. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so composition wise, uh, the value, look, the values uh, are pretty good. I, we, you know, we, this, we've got the bright field, darker tree, lighter sky, that works. Uh, we've got a relatively darker tree in the foreground, dimmer, less uh, lighter in the background lighter in the background, that, that all works. Compositionally, however, um, I'm a little, this, we've got this angle going across here. And it's, it's the tilt of the horizon that's a little unsettling. In other words, I think if, I think if we had the horizon level, or the, the base of this tree line level, it would be less uh, uh, unsettling is, is the, the term for it. It's like, you don't know, are we looking uphill uh, or what's going on? So now is this a, this might be a bridge of some kind, but certainly the bridge probably is not climbing a hill to get from one side of the river to the other. So I would just, uh, be careful when we lay out these uh, paintings that we know we have a sense of the horizon, the the base of the tree line, uh, and and that things like this can be uh, they're not you know it doesn't ruin it but it's a little unsettling for the eye when you start wondering well wait a second uh, you know where's the level of this thing. Uh, well, the only well, other thing I might say on this is <clears throat> uh, I think these trees in the background, while they are lighter, and that's good, they could be also bluer. In other words, uh, as the tree recedes into the distance, it undergoes a change in value, it gets lighter, but it's also things in the background become a little bit bluer as well. So it's not just a, it's not just this color with white added to it. Um, that will get you the change in value. There's also a change in temperature that would help this go into the background more. This foreground shadow uh, is a little strong, right? It's, it's, um, save from being too much because it has an interesting shape to it. So uh, I think it's, I think that's okay, but it could be a little bit lighter. Uh, 
particularly where it reaches into the into the light here, right? This values looks pretty good. Now this that's what I would say about this thing that the horizon, the horizon, the color, and the value here. Oh, this is this is a strong painting, right? Because it's got good value structure. You know what's light, you know it's dark, you know it's foreground, you know it's background. Um, and uh, <clears throat> you know, there's a good variety of edges and colors and stuff like that. It's it's a very uh, very nice. I know there's a little bit of glare on the painting, but I, that's not a problem. Um, the one. Yeah, sorry, I forgot to get an indoor uh, snap of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is so the only thing that kind of when I looked at this before and I looking at it again, I, this now kind of grabs attention away from oh. this. And it's, I think it's because it's bright. This is bright, oh. right next to a very dark dark. And and also it's a little bit unexplained, like you know what what's going on down there, and obviously it's not as important as this uh, group of flowers or this one or this one, but it kind of competes in attention, it competes for attention with the main flower masses, uh, just by virtue of its brightness relative to this dark and this dark. Uh, so just watch that. It's kind of the thing that would, you might notice like after looking at this thing for, you know, a week or two or getting a buddy of yours to look at it and go, you know, maybe this is a little too bright here. Yeah, I, I agree with you. That's something that once I took the picture and submitted it and looked at it online, it kind of jumped out at me too. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. And I think the rest of it, Without that, I think the rest of it reads really well. Maybe one other thing I could suggest is this corner here, a little uh, kind of squarish. And oh. you might be able to bring this blue down across here and make it a less rectangular shape uh, up in this corner. That might uh, help. It's a little bit of an eye grabber, you know? Yeah. That, one I didn't see. Thanks. That, that real square shape up in the uh, upper left hand corner. Right. Um, but yes, other than that, um, I think it's a strong painting and it reads well. Thanks very much. Yeah. Appreciate the suggestions. Yeah, there's two things I see. Yeah. Okay, going to the next one. Is this the painting or the photo? Oh, okay, there's a photo. Painting. Right. All right, well, let's look at the photo first. I, I don't know if this is the uh, painted from a reference photo or painted from life. Um, but one thing we notice in the photo is this strong um, value contrast, uh, value contrast between uh, the water and the leaf between even this relatively light water, and then of course the value is even greater, the jump in value is even greater between the, the dark water and the, and the leaf. And so if we go to the painting, you know, are we seeing that same thing? And, and uh, I think we're losing it a little bit. Um, so what could we do? I think the va I think the value of the of the leaf could be brighter, right? I'm seeing a little bit of a um, indecision on the part of the uh, painter on what value exactly this leaf is, because for one thing, I'm seeing like three different values in one leaf. We've got a relatively dark bit relatively light bit, and then kind of a medium value in each of these leaves. When I think they may have light, dark, and middle values in each leaf, 
but my guess is that the jump in value on one particular leaf, or sorry, within one particular leaf, is not going to be this strong. In other words, that the leaves will read more as yeah, I mean, if we squint at those leaves, the jump in value within a particular within any particular leaf is not as strong as we have on the painting. And so I think that gives us room to um, to quiet down the value changes within each leaf and decide on what value the leaf as a whole should have first as relative to its surrounding uh, background. And I think if we do that, it would immediately be stronger. Uh, it might be that this value of the water can go darker uh, and this value of the leaf, the value of each leaf could go stronger, sorry, lighter. And therefore there's a bigger jump in value. Uh, and then we don't have the choppiness within. Am I making sense here? That there's a three different values within each leaf that that kind of weaken the overall uh, the overall value structure of the leaf itself. Does that make sense? Yeah, I I basically I think I exaggerated the, the like the values like you said. And when you look at the photograph, it, it looks much more flat. Yeah, I was, I was trying to figure out how to handle the water, which was really uh, difficult for me because it almost looks white. And then the gradation to where the lotuses are in the lower left-hand corner has to be darker. And I just couldn't figure out how to I couldn't figure out how to handle the lighter area of the water. And so yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's a combination of uh, uh, oh. I think it's going to be a combination of a couple things. Um, you know, if if this, for example, this this value value here of the of the water, uh, if that were to partake of a little violet color, then the leaves will stand out stronger by virtue of their yellowness. The yellow the yellow value or the yellow color in a in that leaf. Well, would contrast strongly with the a little bit of violet in the water, and then if you also don't break up the value structure uh, of of each leaf uh, in this way, it will also be stronger against the background. Okay. Uh, squinting at these leaves is going to help. Um, you'll see that there's just not that much of a jump in value between the bright part of a leaf and the dark part of a leaf. Uh, at least compared to the value, you know, my guess is there's a, no part of any leaf is going to be darker than the water behind it. Um, and I think that would help just s settle things down and make the whole stronger. Uh, compositionally, you know, we've got this uh, one over here that's kind of drawing the eye, as well as this thing, which kind of draws the eye. I'm wondering if, you know, it's nicer not to have things like this come in twos. So it's nice to have three instead of two. But when we have the third one going this way over here, uh, it's a little, uh, uh, it kind of detracts from the overall composition which seems to be focused more on, on this area, right? Okay. Little oddities, getting carried away with the drawing, but oddities like this, which depart from the other, you know, what else seems to be going on with these, um, can weaken things too, because it tends to grab the eye and you go, wait, wait what, what? Why, you know, why is this one, why are we seeing that one end on or side on when we're seeing the other ones top down? You know what I mean? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But this is a nice dark, I like the way the edges work, you know, the good, good compositional idea. 
good subject. Um, it's really about the value between this and this, and then uh, compositional element of that over there. Great, thanks so much. Yeah. All right, we'll go to the next one. Look. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Again, okay, I think we're talking again about values and uh, because the value, you know, if we squint or if you look at this from far away, the value of this mass of uh, shrubbery or flowers or whatever it is, is pretty much the same as the value back here. And um, it might be better to let's let's go to the reference photo. And I don't know if I don't know if it was painted under the same conditions or not, but um, if it was on a sunny day, you know, we've got obviously these real bright uh, leaves here with the sun shining on them. We've got a bright roadway, and but then we've got this dark shadow of a tree in the background, which which gives the contrast with this foreground. So, um, uh, go to the, yeah, go to the, we're going to the um, painting now and we're kind of losing that contrast. And um, what, what would make these leaves stand out as sunlit is going to be a, a contrast in value with with this, as well as a contrast in value with the background. Particularly if you want this leaf to be uh, the star, or this leaf is going to be the star of the show, as being sunlit and bright against a dark background. We've got to make the background dark, and there's a little bit of uh, uh, when values get too compressed or too close in value to one another, they're, they're, we, we, we approach muddiness. Um, and the muddiness is not, it can be a function of paint mixing, but it's also just overall a function of losing this value structure. And again, you know, we don't have the bright sunlight on the roadway, which um, we had in the reference photo. This read, you know, the, the way it reads now is kind of an overcast, uh, rainy, cloudy day where the values tend to collapse towards the middle uh, as we have in this painting, right? So that's my advice. Now, the other thing is here, we've got a little confusion on values going on with these trees where there's a little bit of too much in jump in value between the, the light side of the tree <clears throat> and the dark side of the tree. I will, you know, I, I would grant you that there's probably a lighter bit on the tree along here, but my guess is it's not this bright. Um, and it may be a function of, uh, uh, if we see, look for, yeah, I mean, if we see these trees here, they're almost like dark poles. There may be a, um, there may be some, uh, can't tell. there may be some reflected light going on here, but reflected light is, is uh, uh, I tell people, reflected light is kind of a snare of the devil. It's a, so easy to overdo and is so destructive of the values that really approach reflected light with caution, okay? Um, it's very, very easy to overdo. It's fun, you know, it's fun to see the reflected light and then to go for it. But then we, uh, by virtue of our enthusiasm and going for it, we tend, I tend to overdo it. And then it's destructive of the shadow. And of course the reflective light, reflected light has to partake of the shadow. It's not, it's not the light, it's a reflected light. So uh, anyway, we're getting a little bit too light here. 
too dim here, too dim here, and a little bit too much the same between the background and the foreground here. I hope that's helpful. Um, but otherwise, you know, I think these reds and these brights will stand out when, when we get the value contrast uh, in the right proportion. Okay, this one I, I remember had a reference photo as well. So here in the reference photo, we're seeing a, a we're seeing a bright hammock against a dark background, um, and then the tree is a little bit. Uh, the tree is obviously darker than the hammock, but a little bit lighter than the background. So let's go to the painting. Okay, you know this this the values work, right? This is darker than this, and this is darker than this. So that works. What I think is a little bit um, uh, distracting from the overall thing is we've got, <clears throat> we've got these tree holes, a lot of tree holes that are maybe a little bit too bright. And they, they are somewhat uh, well, tree holes can be destructive of the overall value of this tree and this background tree shape, right? So the more tree holes you have and the brighter they are, uh, the more this or this or this starts to read as, as, reads as bright as, as bright as or even brighter than the hammock itself. And so um, careful with tree holes like that. Uh, they can be, um, again, uh, little spots of competition with your main subject. And also uh, they kind of break up this value, this mass here. Uh, you've got these sort of, I don't know if this is, if this is dappled light on the, hammock or if it's uh, trying to make the stripey bits um, as well. You might want to just un, you know, get rid of the dappled light or, or stripes on the hammock because um, that's a little confusing. And uh, look, otherwise I think it's Otherwise, I think it's pretty strong in terms of values, right? It's these tree holes that uh, are, you know, and we're getting a little bright over here uh, for what might be the tree line. Brightness is in here. It's, but it's these ones that are jumping out at me. Kind of a nice peaceful subject. Thank you very much. If we notice this, this, this hammock also, by the way, is, um, is a little bit longer and narrower than in the, the painting. But, uh, so you might be able to narrow it down just by cutting into it with the darks. If we look, these, these tree holes on the reference painting, reference photo are not as, they're not as bright as the brightness in the hammock. If we squint, that's pretty, you know, it's pretty far down in value compared to this, 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 I mean, okay? Okay, great, thanks. This painting has a nice mood to it, okay? It has a nice tonalist mood to it. And one thing that we can say that's very nice is treating these, these background and kind of subsidiary trees as solid shapes. I think that's really important, okay? These are solid shapes uh, rather than a collection of individual trees. That's good, uh, it's very good. You've got a little variety here, you know, little darks, little lights, but nothing too dark, nothing too light, all good. Uh, you've got a solid 
you know, readable horizon or, or water level, that's good. It kind of grounds us. Um, uh, oh, and by the way, this, the shape of this cloud, I think, works too with the, with the tree uh, in front of it. So I think that's, that's solid too. What can we say about the, um, the rest of it? <clears throat> well, I, again, I think on this, it's not enough to just add white to these foreground trees to get the far tree line to recede. I think it could be a little bit bluer. You could add blue uh, as well as light, as well as white to <clears throat> cool off as well as lighten the trees in the foreground. Um, I also think this, this tree line could be softer uh, relative to this tree line here to make it recede as well. Um, not sure what this dark shape is here, uh, but it's a little distracting because it's, it seems to be another tree, but there's, we don't see the rest of the tree, right? But if it's not another tree, I'm not sure what it is. So there's that to account for. I just get rid of it. Um, this kind of thing is fine. That, that's because it's not too contrasty. I think it can be read as part of that <coughs> tree line back here, you know, an overall part of that tree line. You might want to soften out these, uh, especially the especially the end of it. A little, it's a little blunt, a little choppy there. Not a big thing because it's not too contrasty. Uh, as far as this foreground tree goes, it's um, it's got nice shape to it. Good, you know, good. Um, the shape of it is nicely done. The only thing I would say on this tree is. <clears throat> And I, uh, I, I'm subject to this as well. We see, I see a lot of collection of dabbing of the paint as individual leaves all the way around, right? Um, whereas I think it would be stronger if we were able to treat it more like this all the way around more like this, all the way around, more like this. In other words, we treat the whole thing first as a solid with a, with a specific shape to it, right? And then at the edges, you could uh, choose a few spots, not everywhere, where the tree meets the sky and there is, um, call for individual dabbing of leaves. I think that, that sort of little um, dabbing of leaves here, 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 uh, kind of, it's just a little, um, it weakens the overall tree shape itself and <clears throat> would be stronger if it were um, treated more solidly with, with variety at at the edges in particular places. Kuhn, okay. Kuhn, um, this is a charming little painting and I think it's very strong. This is obviously the star of the show and it works as the star of the show. So good things about this are, you know, I really like, you've got the value contrast between the background and this white, these white flowers. So it really stands out, right? And this uh, shadow is nice and dark, so it stands out against this light grass in the background. Uh, also, good edges. You know, there's a nice edge on this all the way around, and on this too, very nice. Um, so it looks like gray, you know, a shadow cast on grass. So that's good. Uh, what can I say that would, um, might improve this is, <clears throat> Well, there's, I have two, well, a couple things. One, this roof line here, right, goes back, and then it seems to be covered over by the tree. Um, 
and yet the tree itself seems to be farther back than the shed. So I'm not sure which, you know, where this tree is in relation to this shed, just by virtue of this little overlap of the tree and the shed itself. My, my suggestion would be to make, the, make this shed just frankly in front of this tree, okay? Okay. And, and bring, this, um, bring this roof line up here and here. Therefore, this is clearly in the foreground and this is clearly in the background. So you've got this in the front, this next in the back, then this farther back. Got it. I, I think that would help with a little of the kind of spatial, the depth uh, situation here. Two other things, maybe three other things. One, uh, one is this little tangent between the shadow here and this limb of the bush, right? They, they just seem to kiss each other right here. And uh, whenever you've got two shapes like that, that kind of kiss one another, it tends to draw the eye. You've got a little bit of an arrow here and an arrow here, demanding that the eye look right there. And uh, was it, the answer to that would be to just frankly bring this bush, this, this limb of the bush in front of the shadow, uh, or frankly, in back of the shadow, uh, one or the other, but make it so that they don't kiss one another right there, right? Then, uh, then the, the, the only remaining things I have, would have to say are uh, these, these clouds are uh, pretty similar in size. You might make one bigger than the other. I would suggest making the nearer one bigger than the farther one. That way it doesn't look like, um, well, it just looks, it would look a little bit more, um, uh, re, you know, more real. Uh, if you made that, if you made that top cloud bigger and the, the farther one small, uh, relatively small. The last thing I would say is this tree shape, um, you know, overall is a nice tree shape, right? But the, it's, it's, it's weakened by, <clears throat> by this value going all the way around um, uh, on both sides of the tree, on both the, the sunlit side and on the shadow side. Uh, and so I would suggest uh, making, you know, deciding, I, I think this is the sunlit side, right? By virtue sure. of this cast shadow. And then this side can, or sorry, <coughs> the, the, the away side of the tree can do without the highlights, okay? Too many highlights are gonna, um, Again, you sort of weakening the overall shape of this tree. And remember, this tree, this background tree is not the star of the show. This thing is the star of the show. So anything that we do to add variety and contrast and um, edges and stuff in this background tree will draw the eye back here when we want the eye here. So I'd, I would solidify this get rid of some of that highlights, definitely get rid of the highlights on the shadow side of the limb. And then I think the other thing you could do is make, sorry, uh, make, uh, if we look at the, the photo itself, sorry, you see how these tree limb, uh, the tree limbs disappear up into the foliage. We can't see the, the limb of the tree here, can't see the limb of the tree here, can't see the tree limb here. Whereas on the painting, we're getting a little, um, oh, sorry. We, we, we were, uh, uh, we're seeing a little bit too much nakedness of these limbs 
uh, in the tree. You could obscure the limbs with some tree branches in, you know, certain spots, not all over, but to show that the foliage or the, you know, the leaves come in front of the tree limb here or here or here. Uh, and there it would, it would less, it would look less like we're looking at the kind of naked under, underbelly of a tree. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Yeah, but this, uh, this strong contrast and the shape of this uh, really works well, okay? Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Okay, next one, right? It's the next painting. Okay. <clears throat> Is this in Sturgeon Bay? Do we have the artist with us tonight? I'm looking. Yeah, she's here, Cynthia. Yes, hi, I'm so sorry. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah, immediately recognizable. Uh, we were up there this week. Very nice. I think this is a really very strong painting and uh, I like it a lot. I've got only a couple minor, relatively minor things to say. Um, <clears throat> What were they? Uh, Go ahead. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I have a personal thing. Not everybody shares, not everybody shares my thought on this. My thought is that whenever you put legible writing on a painting, you immediately draw the eye to that writing. Um, and it's because it's recognizable. Our eyes are used to looking for letters and words and things like that. So my eye goes immediately to things like this. You could, you could, you could do it in such a way that it looks like there was lettering on this tugboat without it being recognizably, legibly, the tug Jimmy L, right? Um, just by doing it very sketchy, soft, manner not as contrasty look this is very bright this j here uh this one's very bright as well and so again it's, it's kind of an eye catcher where the eye there's a lot going on and the eye will immediately kind of seek refuge in what it what it recognizes if you follow me okay i agree i agree yeah the, these these flags see are done very well you know very just suggesting these flags. You're not drawing every star on the blue, you know, you're not drawing every stripe. So that's nice. Uh, that's in contrast to this treatment. Um, and by the way, I think that the, the interesting part of this painting is, is this kind of interesting um, uh, outline of the, of the top of the tugboats and other superstructure and everything that kind of grabs the eye you just don't want this competition okay the other thing is the other thing that i i noticed maybe two other things this um this looks like one of those concrete dividers it right? is it was yes yeah and um there's something something bugs me about it and i'm trying to figure out what it is and Oops, sorry. Yeah, it's maybe it's the the strength of the of, of the oh man, sorry. Um gotta get back my okay. There's a real strong contrast between the side of this thing and the and this shape, which is like the little flange at the bottom of this divider. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. got a very strong, you have a very strong contrast there. And then of course there's this very strong, dark, sharp shadow under there, all of which kind of again grabs the eye. 
So I, I think if you were to maybe settle in, reduce the contrast between here and here, maybe soften this edge in one place or another, mm -hmm. just by smearing the paint across or smearing this up a little bit, uh, you could soften that um, high contrast, odd shape at the lower left corner, which seems to detract from, from all this. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, one last thing is that this seems to be a pretty cool, very cool, like ivory black cool color. And you could do with some variety in that. Uh, maybe a little bit of warmth in here. Uh, maybe a little lighter as you get farther away from the viewer. This could be darker and warmer. This could be a little bit, just a hair lighter and a hair cooler. Um, I think that would help push one tug in front of the other. Okay. But really uh, nice shapes of the clouds and, and nice treatment of the subject. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Going to the next one. This is the, oh yeah, okay. Um, this is again a watercolor, right? And uh, Karen. So this, uh, yeah, the, look, this reads is nice, strong sunlight on the front of the building, shadow here, shadow here, sunlight here, sunlight down here. That all works well. And uh, what I was saying to, um, I forget who the last person was. Cynthia? Yes. Yeah. Kind of applies here as well. We've got this very legible, although not as strong because the value contrast is not that strong between the letters and the sign itself. But it's still legible. I mean, you can almost read the phone number on here. So um, I, this is a, it's, it could be just a matter of taste. Right? That, um, whenever I see signs that are written out to be very legible, it's, it's a matter of taste on my part that I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. But uh, it may be that, you know, you want to really memorialize this particular place or they want to buy it or something. So I you can't object too much, but, but know that anytime there's le legible lettering or words, it's going to grab the eye. Okay. Uh, what else can we say? <clears throat> I recognize this particular kind of dog. I don't know the name for it, but it's, so that's nice. And the person is nicely done. And the scale of that is all, the scale of this is nicely done. The bike seems a little big, right? I mean, the, the bar on that bike is at that guy's belly button. So maybe the bike is slightly too large or the guy is too small. I'm going with the bike being just slightly too big. But look, this is all nicely done. A good variety of, of uh, here. These trees in the background are quiet enough to just settle into the background, right? They're not, they're not too broken up with sky holes or value changes or color. So that's good. Um, window, you know, windows, I think the windows are tough. You want to do, we want to do all these individual panes of glass. Um, it might be better to just suggest a few panes of glass here and here and just treat them a little bit more uh, suggestively. And I think that would make the make it a little bit stronger and more atmospheric. All in all, uh, nicely done. I don't know if Karen is here, but she is not. Okay. We'll go to the next one. Linda. There is a reference. 
Oh yeah, there is a, I saw a. This is, this is COVID, the other is pre-COVID. Yeah, this is a, kind of a beach scene, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, um, that was a good one. I like that. <laughs> I like I like the composition. Okay, because there's a nicely established, you know, plane of the ground or the water. This thing is anchored. You know, this big arrow is anchored by this vertical. That's good. That's nice. Kind of stops you from from just running off the page this way. Um, I wonder if we could get a little bit more variety in this. It's a little, little of a, what they call a fast line. You know, there's no interruptions in the tree line. I think there could be a little bit more, maybe a little bump here or a bump here, or maybe even a little, just bump here of this same value and color. Uh, that would stop the, again, it would serve to stop you from just racing off the page that way. Uh, the only, uh, I noticed on this, uh, you know, you see here on the, on the uh, reference photo, along the, along the edge where the water meets the trees, there's a little bit of, and you see a little bit of bumps here or here or even here, this little bump, little bump. Um, but along the, the edge of the water where it meets the trees, there's a little bit of brightness here. A little bit of something to suggest uh, houses or structures or docks or whatever like that. I don't know the scale of this painting, so it might be hard to do, but um, a little bit of a, a little bit of a suggestion of Human life along here might be helpful. Um, and then this shadow shape here, I think that's shadow, right? Um, probably would <clears throat> would gain strength or would would it would it would help to make this less choppy, okay? There's a lot of different values going on in this shadow that detract from its overall shadowness. Um, you've got a pretty dark piece here and here and here, but then we've got uh, well, then we've got an intermediate value here and an even lighter value of the shadow here and here. Um, and then a little bit too much broken up. I know, I look, drawing or painting dappled shadow or dappled light is not, it's, it's a real challenge. Um, yeah, you've got, you've got dappling going on down here. So I think the thing to do on that is to um, decide on what is the overall shape, uh, direction, composition of this shadow paint it solidly to an intermediate or, you know, to a one value, maybe a little bit darker than this, and then decide from there, okay, well, there will be patches of light within the shadow. Where do I place them? How do I vary them in size um, and shape? And then how bright can they be? It's not going to be as bright as this. Okay, um, but they will be brighter, you know, distinctly brighter than the shadow, so that there's more of a jump between shadow and dappled light than we seem to have going on right now. Uh, this, this, uh, the way this looks is a little bit of indecision about the shape, the value, and the dappling going on uh, within that shadow. But I think if we, you know, I think if you uh, make that solid and uh, stronger, less choppy, it will read well. Uh, overall, look, I like the paint treatment. Looks like there was some knife work going on here and here. 
the brushwork. Um, I actually even like the little patches of canvas that show through. I think it makes it interesting, makes it look like a real, you know, plain air sketch. And I think it adds to the, to the charm of, of what we do to have that going on. So I think this is nice and uh, could be made stronger pretty easily. Okay, here, value, values again are gonna be our friend where, uh, uh, you know, I think there's this, this shape can be more solid and uh, of a darker value than the foreground shape. And <clears throat> the foreground, if we make this darker in the background, we're gonna have more room on the value scale to get lighter and brighter here without getting so much white into the paint. And uh, I think if we were able to do that, then this would look overall stronger. I like the composition. I would get rid of this shape as a detraction, distraction. It's unexplained. We don't really know why it's there um, and so on. I like I love the uh, I love the different value or sorry different edges going on here, that's very nice. And then one last thing would be to say, uh, see if we could bring these dark shapes together, rather than having it look a little bit spotty. Right, this is a better treatment of the dark shape here. Uh, they, these are uh, up in up in the flower pot and be, directly behind it. It's a little bit too. Uh, polka dot uh, like. Uh, if we can just, you know, unify a couple of these things and make fewer of these dark spots, overall it would be stronger. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. That's very helpful. Oh, Marie. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, I, get, I think getting rid of this would help and uh, simplifying things. It might also work as a square. So if we treat it as a square, it might be stronger than, than what you have. But yeah, very nice. Yeah, thank you. It would, uh, making it a square would eliminate some of the need for explaining what's going on in the background, right? Okay, <clears throat> Deb. Yep. Deborah Aronson, yeah. You took on a, you you bit off a lot here. You got you've got a lot of figures, a lot going on. Um, I love I love street scenes like this, and I love having like you do. I love having um, figures in the painting. I think that's good. We also don't have that issue that I've been talking about, where you know these are these signs are not. We know that they're signs. We don't need to know what restaurant is there. Uh, so that's good. We're getting a little value confusion here, though, where, you know, I think this, these sides of the buildings are meant to be in shadow, and this one is meant to be in the sunlight or in the light. Is that right? But, and yet, and yet this, this side is reading too light. So I think you could go darker on this side of this building here, similar to this dark here, or at least as, at least as dark as this here. And that way you would get a strong contrast between this sh shadowed building here and the, the bright building behind it. <clears throat> uh, also, I think if you were able to go darker here, you would avoid the need to get too white in here. And getting white, you know, um, white is white when we use it like this to go brighter uh, tends to be a weakening factor in the paintings. Um, I also think you could probably go a little bit darker in the sky. That would make this building brighter, right? Uh, by comparison. So darker here, a little bit darker here, less white. Um, and that would help. Uh, this, the, in terms of, um, I'm now having, let me just move this out of the way. Yeah, we got a little bit of a, 
strong, uninterrupted, sharp edge here. One thing that might be nice is just, you know, to maybe bring up a little suggestion of a chimney pot here, or, you know, one here, uh, that would interrupt this otherwise kind of boring, slightly uninteresting, you know, roof line. I think that would help. And, uh, you know, otherwise it's pretty stark, these, this, this roof here. Uh, this one is okay because there's interest going on there, but the, the big building I think is suffers from a little uh, lack of interest in the in the skyline. In terms of the the, uh, the ground plane, I think we could um, I think you need to make a decision on how or whether the buildings are casting a shadow. And if it's casting a shadow this way, then we need to clearly indicate that. Um, that would mean that this person standing in the shadow would be darker against the light background. Same here, darker against the light background. Whereas these people would be bright in comparison with the shadow in the foreground. Um, not quite sure how the reference uh, reads on that, but that's kind of what um, when you're out there and you're looking, look for that sort of thing where you've got a, a figure standing in the shadow silhouetted by a bright background or a conversely, you have a figure that is bright in the foreground who stands out bright against a dark background. That's gonna help in terms of spacing the, the, the painting from front to back, clearly showing what's in front, what's in back, and also will just help with um, the overall read of the values. Right now, all the figures look like they're in the same light and therefore um, not quite sure what's going on with the shadows. I appreciate it, thank you. Going to the next one. Oh, I see it wasn't a, it wasn't a real sunny day, but again, you, you do see the um, uh, this value difference between the background and the foreground, okay. Mm -hmm. going, to, going to the next one. Yeah, this is Charlotte, I think. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> I like this one because it's got a strong sense of, of light and dark. Uh, the beach is bright. Uh, these trees are really, really nicely painted. Um, so uh, not a whole lot to say on that. When I was looking at this earlier, though, I thought, I wonder, I wonder if, if Charlotte could go a little bit darker on the sky, right? If we, have, if we look at the sky here, it's considerably darker than the sky here. And if we were able to do that, then um, you get more of a contrast between here and here, and that, that uh, sand would read uh, much brighter. Uh, might be able to give us room to go darker on this as well. I don't know if I'd fuss with that immediately. I might go for the sky first and see this might then look too bright. Might want to lower that in value. Uh, I would soften these shapes because I'm not sure quite what's going on there. But I like this guy, the way he's drawn. And suggested the scale, everything about it. It's very nice. Okay, go on to the next one. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> and there's this a one, reference. Yeah, this one has a reference too. Oh, crap. as I remember from the reference, this is uh, a value issue here as well. Yeah, I mean, the, the trees are, so right now we've got, <clears throat> need to get, oh. these trees could go darker, and that way that the ground plane would look brighter. Uh, these trunks could go darker, right? Um, and I think just doing that would make it look like, you know, a sunlit garden with a, a 
avenue of trees. And, and then I think you could address maybe this background after making these adjustments. The you know, only other thing to say on these trees is, again, I would make them solid, not a collection of hash marks uh, uh, or of hatching, but a distinct solid shape that has slightly lighter and slightly darker shapes within it. And that's going to improve the overall solidity of the tree <clears throat> and make it let, let look less like a collection of uh, you know, pencil marks, right? Same with the grass. I mean, I, I think we could, you know, this is uh, nice and solid, but this is a kind of a collection of uh, pencil marks. When I think a more solid treatment of, of the overall uh, surface would be better. Excellent. Okay, next one. The old tractor. Yeah. Well, it looks like we, um, Lynette um, didn't quite get to, I'm not sure if this is finished or not, but um, look, this is a very strong shape and it's nicely drawn and it's got good value structure in it, nice some nice edges. I question this kind of halo shape, which, which we often get, you know, um, it's easy to get that when we're either painting up to uh, a, a shape or a, a value, and we don't quite want to meat, you know, or if we are, it looks like here, there's a little bit of wiping out that took place, which gives it some of this, some of the charm of this painting. But if we're going to wipe out, we got to be careful to wipe out right up to what we're wiping out. Uh, conversely, if we're going to make, suggest a uh, kind of a shrub shape in the background, uh, let's just not, um, do it in such a, such a way that it echoes the shape in the foreground. Rather, make it kind of frankly distinctive from the shape in the foreground. And uh, would, would therefore kind of set off the shape in the foreground. But, Great. But this is a really uh, charming piece that I think uh, with, the, <clears throat> with that uh, in mind could be made stronger. Okay, next one. Thank you. Did that make sense, whoever I was, Lynette? Yeah, that made a lot of sense. I really wasn't sure where I wanted to go with the painting, so I stopped. Yeah, and I think, uh, but you've got the possibility to go to the next, step with that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you for the great ideas. Thank you. This is Mary, right? Yes. And Mary, was there a reference photo on this one? No. Okay. Um, okay. This looks like Lake Michigan and a lot of different places that I've been to very distinctively Lake Michigan with this, you're standing up on a bluff, so this high horizon, you're standing on top of a bluff looking down. I can even, I seem to even know this particular place. <laughs> I probably don't, but it could be many different places. Um, <clears throat> look, the, the values are, are pretty good all along. My only, uh, value issue really is at this horizon where uh, I'm not sure that where the water meets the sky, but we have an inversion here of light, seems to be light water, dark sky, right at the, right at the uh, horizon there. And if, um, 
if I were going to make the water this light in the distance so that the horizon and the water kind of fade into one another, which often happens on the water, you could do it um, by getting rid of this dark here, the dark sky, and uh, just blending these two one into another, softly gradating this dark water up into that lighter sky. And it would look, um, you could experiment with how strong you have to make that edge. You don't really have to make it very strong for it to read like water sky, um, but I think less strong than it could do with being less strong than, than this difference here, particularly. As for the trees, you know, you've got this application of paint, impasto, uh, all the way around. I wonder if you could, you know, with the knife, not giving up the knife, was this, this was done with the knife, right? Completely. Yeah, so without giving up the knife, you could, again, uh, solidify some of these shapes to make them uh, subsidiary to more important shapes, Got like, it. like these or like these. Um, in terms of the composition of the tree, it's, it's got a nice overall ver varied shape to it. You know, it's not like lollipops on a stick. So that's nice. You know, it's got a good tree shape to it. I think just um, solidifying some of these values in a kind of a middle value, maybe like that, and then overlaying it with some carefully selected individual leaf shapes would help. Yep. <clears throat> and, you know, the knife works well for this stuff. And this works well because it's not too, it's not screaming out for attention here, right? Uh, this little wavelet is very charming. I like that a lot. Uh, that really suggests the beach. And this kind of variety in value and temperature, going from the, the deep to the shore, that, that clearly works well too. Yeah, I think it's mostly the, some unification and careful uh, selection of which individual leaf shapes you want to highlight. You could break, you know, you solidify these shapes and you could get a little bit more variety in the edges of those more unified shapes as well. Yeah, thanks, Stuart. I want to go to the next one over here. This is Lori's, <clears throat> and I know there's a reference photo. Okay. So, <clears throat> let me get this out of the way. Yeah, you know, in terms of values, you've got this against this, which is nice and strong. You've got this against this and against this, which is nice and strong. But then we're kind of losing a little, and I don't know if this is, this is probably meant to be reflected light from here, but it might be too bright. Uh, Cause it's, it's looking like there's a little bit of white paint or something on the wall here. I'd knock that back a value or two. Um, and get that to not compete with uh, this bright uh, <clears throat> bank of flowers up there. This uh, doorway, again, it's a little bit, so there's two shapes in here. Both of them are kind of a little bit chopped up in terms of values, right? We got a, we have it bright, but then there's a little bit of dark. And it's bright, but then there's dark. And then there's bright, but there's this little dark here. And the same with this little door. I, I, I grant you, Lori, that there's gonna be lighter and darker bits within, this, within these two light shapes. But my guess is that the, 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 the difference between the bright and the dark within those light shapes is not as strong as we have it here. 
my um, you could settle down both both of these brights and it would look brighter and stronger uh, and less eye catching here. Uh, one thing I think we have to decide is, is this the star or kind of is this the star or is this the star? And we've got strong contrasts in each place in terms of value and color. And I'd, I'd, uh, I would want to make a decision, Lori, on which one you want to highlight. You could highlight this by making the sky just a little bit darker, a little bit bluer. Um, uh, this will get stronger if we simplify the value. This is about as strong as it's going to get, this contrast here. So you might want to just soften this by bringing some blades of grass up into there, some darker blades reaching up into the light, some lighter blades which reaching up into the dark, uh, and so on. Overall, uh, yeah, I'm, <clears throat> it's a little bit, um, you're kind of drawn, you're kind of drawn into four quarters or more or more. You get this shape, this shape, this shape, well, five, five big shapes, and then the one in the middle. Um, you could go a couple of different ways. And <clears throat> by the way, I really like the way you've softened that out as it reaches the edge of the painting. That works well. Same here. This uh, works well. You know, if you were going to go with this being the center of attention, I would ease up on the contrast here, perhaps by making the shadow a little bit lighter as it meets the bright sunlit grass and softening the edge. That would uh, subordinate this, it would subordinate, sorry, I'm, it would subordinate this portion of the painting to this portion of the painting. Hope that's helpful. Yes, very helpful. Thank you, Stuart. Okay, but it's got some really uh, charming things going on. Thanks. Uh, is this the? Did I skip one? No. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Richard. <clears throat> This is a very moody, uh, low-key painting. Nothing is very bright in the painting, and it all reads in that low-key register. Nothing seems to be jumping out at me as being out of key. In other words, nothing is too bright. If you were to hit anything in this painting brighter than this, it would read like a neon sign, right? It would look like, ooh, I mean, you know, that's wrong. Um, Compositionally, you know, I'm wondering what this does for us. Uh, it might be better to just take this water back here. That way. Uh, and we would see the base of this tree in the water, the reflection. It reads now as a little bit of a U shape there. So we've got this shape of the water, I mean, this shape of a pathway too, parallel to the water. I might get rid of the path and just treat it as water. And I think that might help <clears throat> uh, quiet down the background um, and make it this kind of moody in forest interior with water in the foreground uh, where it's, it can be simple but strong, right? 
there's this little shape that's a little eye grabber. Uh, that, that corner here could be a little varied, particularly in the top of the, the top of this shrub here, I think would help. Um, yeah. I like how it gets dimmer as you go this way. It gets dimmer as you go this way. And this is the area, the patch of brightness here. I think that works. Uh, but I think I would want to think about getting rid of this thing, uh, the downed tree, and getting rid of this pathway. Okay. Thanks, Stuart. Uh, yeah, wow. I think it's a matter of values. Again, uh, if we were to, if you were to um, darken these backgrounds, that light of the flower would stand out. Kind of like here, this is pretty dark and this flower is light in comparison. If we don't have that value contrast, the flower kind of, it's weak, right? This is similar to that, this is similar to that. Uh, and we kind of lose the flower in the background. <clears throat> Other than that, I think the shapes are good. Uh, I like the composition. A uh, little bit choppy, you know, like some of this stuff we could make us more start off with a decision first on what value, what color is that border of the flower going to be? And then into that, shape and value, paint the, the lightnesses and the darknesses. And that way uh, you'd be able to gauge better how bright and how dark uh, you can go. Right now it looks a little bit indecisive. Uh, really that's all I can say about this. All right, Good, go, to next, go to the next one. Uh, okay. And I know there's a reference photo for this too. This is Elvina, right. Yeah. This is a, cha this is a challenging subject, man. This is but really quite well done. You know, the only thing I would suggest here is getting rid of <clears throat> this this kind of stripey effect back here. Yeah. Uh, I think that detracts from this very strong subject, which, which um, is obviously the center of interest. Mm -hmm. Any interest in the background is going to be like, well, you know, why? Why, why are we doing this? Um, yeah. Right? I was going to break it up, like break it up with um, green. Because I like the red and the green complementary in the background, but I was going to have it faded back more. Yeah. If you do introduce some variety into the background, I would make it darker yeah. and not uh, distinct shapes, you know, make it more of a um, abstract in, in shape mm -hmm. and uh, in treatment. Otherwise, I think if you were do, to do that, make it darker and more abstract, this thing will really pop out. Yeah, leap off the page. And uh, <clears throat> I understand this is painted in um, indirect light, so you don't have a, you know, you're not in sunshine, you're not in uh, like a direct artificial light. Yeah, the reference is kind of blown out, so it's kind of yeah, hard. To yeah, um, you might look for um, some way to introduce some cooler colors into this uh, statue and I, well, it, I don't it, know. It has some white with, with, um, with um, turquoise, with white mixed in. You can't see it with the reference picture, but it's, yeah. there's white turquoise in the middle of the other brights. Yeah. It's pure white there, but it's really orange. If you see it on my picture in the background, it's more yeah. orange, more yellow yeah. than, than it looks right there. Well, yeah, so your, your, your experience in painting the form at the palette and chisel will mm -hmm. come in helpful here where, you know, the, the shadows on this figure, this white figure are warm and dark. 
up in here, up in here, up here, up here, up here. But then the kind of half tones, as you leave the light and go to the shadow, yeah, uh, it will go through. Look for the coolnesses along this boundary and along in here, mm. along in here. But uh, with Make those. With those, with those things, I, particularly the background, of, you know, I think the, it's really this which is detracting from uh, the subject. Yeah, you know, that's the that's the main uh, it's the main detraction. Okay, mm -hmm. nicely drawn, uh, nicely painted. Thank you. Three more. Okay, we're getting there. <clears throat> Robin. Robin, yeah. Okay, so again, we got a story of values. Look at look how. Um, sorry. Uh, this uh, plaque, which is really cool, uh, very interesting, is a lot brighter than this background here, um, and I think we're losing that in the painting. Uh, yeah, so the the value difference uh, here is not as great, and in fact, this um, plaque appears somewhat darker than the background. So uh, I would make a decision on which one is darker, which one is brighter. Squinting, squinting first, and so, and let's say you decide that overall this thing is brighter than this stuff. Okay, well then uh, you know that to, you would start with a shape of this shape that's overall brighter than the background. And then within that overall bright shape, look to make the darks, okay? And uh, <clears throat> um, this is nicely done, very nicely drawn. It's just, uh, the, the background wall competes with it in value for, uh, or detracts from the overall value of the, of the plaque itself. And clearly we have to say that this is the star of the show. Um, so we, we wanna do whatever we can to make, you know, to support that. This nicely supports that, it's kind of an abstract herbal, you know, bundle of herbs or flowers that works. Uh, this could be, uh, well, again, we got to make a decision. Is that darker or brighter than the background wall? Uh, all these differences in value like we have here, like we have here, like we have here, uh, this difference in value between the background and the wall, it's all going to grab the eye, you know, everything, the things that grab the eye are going to be uh, bright colors, big changes of value, uh, clashing colors like red and green or blue and orange, <clears throat> sharp edges like this or like this. Uh, things that are placed in the very center of a painting will grab the attention. The human figure will grab the attention. Um, and uh, things like that legible writing will, are really gonna grab the attention. So here you've got a lot of attention grabbers uh, that are competing with what is undeniably uh, really well drawn, really, really well painted and is clearly the star of the show. And I would wanna just subordinate the rest of the painting uh, to our star. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Thanks. Robin, okay. Uh, I think we have one more or two more. Two more, okay. And we've gone over a little bit, but um, I will quickly go through this. <clears throat> yeah, very, very. Uh, this is nicely drawn, it's a cool subject. Well, keep in mind the perspective here. This corner of the 
of this, this thing is called a pediment. That corner of the pediment is closer to the viewer. And this is farther away. Both are above eye level. So this will descend to meet the horizon. Right now, uh, the pediment is a little wonky in that it appears to rise away from the horizon. And so the eye is kind of troubled by that a little bit. Uh, this is nicely solid with a little variety in the, in the darks and stuff, same here, that's nice. Uh, one thing you might add is a, as a um, departure from reality, but might help is maybe a little chimney pot here would interrupt this relatively fast, slightly uninteresting line of the building as it goes back to meet that tree. Um, otherwise, uh, I think it's very cool and uh, I like it. Is a perspective issue and then this um, roof line issue. Okay, this is the last one, right? Is that right, Mary? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> this looks like Alaska or something. Um, or uh, Norway or something like that. <clears throat> and uh, it's really uh, got a lot of good things going for it. One thing I notice about the, the reference is you see the, um, we have a little bit of a uh, interruption of the water, connecting it with these verticals, which I think would help. Um, if we go to the painting, without the, without some inter, without without some verticals connecting here, we're getting a little bit of a parallel stripe type situation here, uh, where this portion of the painting seems a little bit disconnected from this, and I think an overlap of uh, of a tree that, or a dead tree or a live tree that went up and overlapped into the background mountains would, would be helpful. And you've got to be careful about where you do it and how many you do and get some variety in them. But I think that would um, connect the foreground to the background <coughs> and kind of reduce that stripe, uh, the parallel effect. Okay. Um, This uh, mountain line, the skyline here, uh, I think would benefit from a little variety in the edge, a little softer edge. Um, looks like there's quite a bit of paint on the brush as we are approaching the boundary between the distant mountains and the mid-ground mountains. And uh, I would just, um, And maybe rather than brushing parallel to the skyline, be sure to brush a little bit up um, off the line of the mountains to soften that edge. One thing I noticed about this that I, that I like, and I know that is diff difficult from my experience, is getting these snow fields up here to read like snow, but stay in the background. And that's difficult because it's so tempting to paint that in as white, as we think, well, snow is white, so let's put white on there. But then you put white on there and it's too bright and it doesn't read as if it's sitting on the mountain 50 miles away. It's reading as strong as this um, rooftop in the foreground. So this is nicely done, you know, Nice soft edge here and here uh, and here. And uh, the value of that snow is appropriately kept. Um, not, uh, it's down, down from white, so it reads properly. 
I, I would just solidify some of these shapes and make them not so choppy. Uh, make a fewer, fewer strokes of that light color. Um, but same value, same location, but rather than four little strokes there, make one big shape out of those four strokes. Um, and it, it re, it's going to require some decision on, well, does this thing go like this? You know, but you got to kind of decide, like, what shape is that and, and how to do it. In terms of this foreground, this is really nicely done. There's variety uh, and uh, appropriately abstract little shapes in the foreground. And, uh, you know, the, the, the ground plane is, is uh, simple and the right value. So that all works. So to recap, it's these verticals, uh, the treatment of this edge, and then unifying some of these snow shapes. And then I think we're done, Mary. Well, thank you so much. Uh, you did a great job. I have been blabbing my head off for... I know, I'm sorry. We should have gotten you some water somewhere along the way. Two, hour, two hours, but... <laughs> but you have all kinds of notes here that say thank you to you, great ideas. So um, make sure you look at those. And How do I get out of this? Uh, uh, up at the top. Go to the, up at the top and you can uh, stop share. Got it. Okay. Whew. Yeah, good. But uh, thank you very much. There's uh, uh, many comments here and uh, people may have some other things to say. Uh, thank you so much, Stuart. That was terrific. Hey, thanks for listening. Thanks, Stuart. Stuart. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stuart. It was wonderful. Hey, thanks, thanks for listening to me. I, I enjoyed it. Thanks, everybody, for being here tonight. And uh, really, uh, it was good. It was very helpful. Thanks, Stuart. Oh, good to see you, Alvino. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see you in person at the Palace. Yeah. yeah, me too. <clears throat> well, there's a lot of chats that I see that I didn't look at before, but. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Appreciate it.